For this lesson, we're going to concentrate on how to create a CDF. A CDF is a character definition file and can be basically any skeletal geometry. Maybe it's a non-playable character, maybe it is a fish even. Or it can also be the player, and it's built up with a skeleton, some skin files which are actually geometry, and then attachments for something like, say, a pistol to put on the side, or maybe even the pistol in your hand with the weapon bone. So let's look at how to create a CDF file and save it and then load it into, say, a level to test it. To get to where we can create a CDF, we need to go to the Character Tool. This is located in the Tools menu. Go down to Animation, Character Tool. The Character Tool is an entirely different grid. It's not the same one that we use in the level. The interaction is the same way, and you can move around using WASD. But what you do in here is extremely localized, and you basically just build what you need, save it out, and then go into the level. So inside of here, you can see a blend space. This may not show up on your screen because this is an extra view. We can simply disable it. And now we have probably what everybody sees by default. Next, we need to create a character CDF file to house all of our geometry in. So what we're going to do is go to the objects, and we'll just do a new character. We don't have an objects folder, so we can just type that in. We'll enter that, and let's create another folder, and we'll call this one tootcare. Now we need to create the character definition file, which will also be tootcare and then we save. So now you can see inside of the characters, or objects inside of the characters section, we have a tootcare.cdf file. I'm going to hide the display options and I'm going to fold this out. So we have some messaging. The messaging shows an incomplete character cannot be loaded by the engine. And the first one is the skeleton. And we need to actually comprehend something before we add the skeleton. Because the skeleton, in theory, if you make your own, has to be registered. And it has to be registered in the skeleton list. So if we click on this, the first one we see is the skeleton player generic. And this is the exact skeleton that, whether it be the, the guy in the, the letter jacket, or even the player, or even the old SDK players, they all ran off of skeleton player generic. And it's a CHR file that's registered. So now that we know it's registered, we can go back to Toot Care. We can double-click on Skeleton, and then let's go and get the same skeleton for our dude. So we go to Generic, and we have the CHR. Give it a second, and it'll load up. We're going to click the Materials, and we want to go to the same path. And load the material. Let's click the Save icon here, so we can make sure it registered. And we basically have the skeleton built. If we were to open the display options and click on joints, we can now see our skeleton inside of the viewport. Now what we need to do is actually add some skin. And it will take a few skin files in order to make the entire body, or it can be all just one. And it's built this way so that you understand how a modular system can extend the same skeleton for different people. If you have only one mesh, you can't swap around. So say you wanted different hands or you wanted different pants. If it's all one mesh, that's not an option. So this is why we're going to add multiple skins. To add a skin file, we go to the attachments. and We want to add. By default, it brings up a joint attachment. We want a skin attachment. So we're going to select that and we're going to change the name. By default, for myself, I start with the head. So we're going to press enter with the head and we want to select geometry. So we're going to go to our characters, human, SDK player, and let's grab the head A skin file. And now we can see that we've got the same guy that everybody knows set up as a skin file, a dot skin file. Now we need to add, just for the sake of having it, the material file in case somebody wants to change it we can have it with us right here. So we're going to add the head A material. And like before, let's press save. 
So let's close this and we're going to add another. We're going to change this to the jacket. So we're going to just type in jacket, change it to a skin attachment like before. And now we have the skin of the jacket. I'm going to go ahead and, for the sake of time, add this stuff really quickly. So now that I have all of them done, let's go ahead and save that once again. And to make sure that we're actually set up properly, let's put this in the main window. Catch the tab. And what I want to do is actually look. Let's save all one more time. And what we want to do is look inside of some of the animations. So what we can do is grab a smart object. Those are easy to see. Let's choose a, an obstacle. And we'll choose to vault over. So if you press play, we can see that our skeleton that we set up is actually using the same animation as the default guy because it's the same skeleton. And all of our skin files seem to be following along nicely. Like before, if I want to remove the joints, I click here. And we can see it better. So let's go ahead and pause this. And I'm going to go ahead and save all once again. Close the character tool and it will prompt me to save one last time and say yes. So let's open a, the pit blank file that we've used all over the place. And if we come down in here, we don't have a nav mesh drawn, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to freeze everything, going over and pressing F. And what we want to do is come into our entity and grab a AI entity for our character. We can double click it and bring him into the scene. If we press G, we can frame him up. So we have a guy with a red jacket, but this isn't the same guy we had. We had a guy named Took Care who actually had a yellow jacket. So let's change the CDF of this character. So scrolling down, we're able to see that the model exposed is the SDK player red.cdf. So let's double click on that, and what we're going to do is actually source out where exactly our guy is, the toot care guy. And if we look right here, we can see that we have the CDF file. So let's double click. And now you'll notice that we have our toot care player, this CDF, saved out. And in theory, if we drew out a nav mesh, it would be able to interact with the scene and fight against you. So this tutorial shows you the basic idea of how to grab the skeleton and grab the model from the, uh, the repository or the directory, and then combine them into a CDF file for you to expose and possibly use or fight against in your level. So this is where we're going to stop in this, and I encourage you to watch the remaining videos to understand something like an attachment or even how to do footsteps through audio.